This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, this is The Ramsey Show, where America hangs out to have a conversation about your life and your money. I am Ramsey personality, Rachel Cruz, and for the first time in history, my my co-pilot is Dave Ramsey. <laughs> <laughs> About five minutes before the show started, I was like, what if you let me take the lead just for an hour of the show while you're in here? Because that has not happened yet with a Ramsey personality, where Dave is in the is in the co-host seat. How you feeling over there? <laughs> uh, I'm... I'm it's kind of like when I was teaching you to drive. <laughs> Just bracing. I was bracing. teaching. I'm, I'm trying to not touch the brake on the passenger side while you're supposed to be braking at the red light. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right before we went live, I was like, and which buttons do I push to get the callers in? That's real, that's real comforting right there. Oh, man. Well, it's going to be a fun hour. So it's a free call anywhere in America at 888 825 Two two five, and we'll start off with Myra in Lubbock, Texas. Myra, welcome to the show. Hello, Rachel. Hello, Dave. I love your show, by the way, Rachel. Oh, thank um, you. So, yes. Um, quick backstory before my question is: I started working part time at a uh, advisor's office, and it, it's been great. The um, person that was full time was off for medical leave. And she got better, and now she's doing part-time. And so we're working together and things like that. But prior to that, there was other people helping in the office that were just interns. And so from the beginning, you know, I was having to pick up from where they left off to what they knew. And because she she had to leave um, unexpectedly um, to do her medical leave. And so point is, I just... I, I just picked up where everybody left off, and I was doing my best, trying my best, and things like that. But now that she's come back, it's been very difficult because she could be um, very aggressive with her words, and um, she doesn't use that the tone of voice that she uses with me. Um, well, she changes her tone of voice when the financial advisor is not around, and she said things to me in the past, like, I'm the full time. Don't touch my things on my desk. Um, and it's just little petty things, you know, like I don't want my lo- your lotion on my desk. Um, don't move my okay my paper clips and things like that. And my question is, how do how do I go on if I feel that it's just it takes so much energy? Because when I'm in the office, I'm always trying to not do something that's going to tick her off or she's going to be passive aggressive again, or she's going to be rude to me. Yeah. Did, and well, there is occasions when my, we work together sure. and it's just so draining. Sure. Absolutely. So Myra, why did she leave in the first place? What you said medical leave? Yeah. So her cancer came back and thankfully okay. she was, um, she was able to take care of it. And now her doctor is asking her to not be full time so that she can, you know, slowly okay. back into it. Yeah. Um, she is older and, you know, she has like no filter and things like that, which I am, I'm young and I am not have as you, good Myra, as I wish I was. Myra, have you, have you confronted her at all? Have you sat down, um, and confronts, you know, that's kind of a strong word, but have you asked questions to her of, Hey, do you realize kind of how you're coming off? Is everything okay? How are you doing? Cause, cause we find here, you know, at Ramsey, we have, you know, almost 1200, uh, team members. So working on interpersonal relationship is something I feel like we do on a daily basis. And usually you find that people who are hurting can tend to hurt people, right? That's saying hurt people, hurt people. So there's a part of me thinks that she's, there's probably a level of her that's stressed, freaked out, fearful of her own story and kind of what's going on. And it's coming out on you, which is not okay. But have you, have you talked to her about it at all? Um, I, I have not said it the way you said it. And, and I think the way you you're asking me to approach it makes sense. Um, I have talked to the FA and I have told him the situation and he's told me, you know, she's really hard to work with and other people have told me, you know, just she's, she's a little territorial and things like that. And so 
it never gave me the impression that she was she was acting this way because of the current situation. It just it's giving me more the impression that that's just the way she is. And you know, this lady, like um, one, Myra, this this lady's scared, and she's been scared a long time. And um, and all this crap is to cover over her fear. She's afraid for her job. She's afraid for her health. Uh, you're a, you, she sees you as a threat. And so uh, the good news is you're just a sweet lady. And I think if you'll just look at her as someone who's scared, uh, kind of uh, put a little different picture when you see her instead of the big old mean lady that's rough and tough and hard to work with. Instead, look at her as a, a, a little child who's afraid. And how would you treat someone that was afraid with, with pity and with kindness? And you, you'd help them and you'd say, how can I serve you? What can I do for you? And she'll calm down eventually. And if she doesn't, it's just a part-time job. Go get another one. It's not worth working with jerks. That's the other thing. So, I mean, leave. It ain't that big a deal. Uh, but uh, you don't, don't, in other words, don't let yourself be subjected to a toxic situation because you don't, because you w refuse to walk out the door on a part-time job. So just say, side or not, out of here, baby, done. But if you want to try to work on the personal idea of it, which is why you call, I think you just treat her with unbelievable levels of kindness. And just because I, I'll guarantee you, this lady's really afraid. She's afraid for her job. She thinks you're gonna, they're going to kick her out because she was hard to work with before, and then she had a cancer problem, so she's unreliable. And, yeah. you know, she's afraid they're going to put her on the street, and you're going to take her job if you look too good. So how can I help you? You've been through so much. Uh, man, I just want to support you. You're kind of a legend around here because <laughs> she is. <laughs> legend maybe and not the way you want to be a legend, but well, she's kind a, of a legend. It's a true statement nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs> but I wonder, too, even after, you know, how work, how the workplace has changed so much since COVID, mm -hmm. dealing with people now mm -hmm. via technology, there's not that, that in-person connection as, mu as much anymore within companies. I mean, obviously, Myra, it sounds like it is for you. But you talk about this a lot in Entree Leadership, though, that of how to deal with these situations, that it's not going around, obviously, and talking and bashing her no, to other people. So the fact you went up, Myra, was good right. to your leader, I think was a smart move. But also to have the ability to sit down with someone that you work with, especially if it's a, for a long period of time, you guys have history, and it sounds like you guys are pretty hand in hand with what you do. Um, getting that, it's, it is key because it's exhausting. Like if you go to work and you don't like the person you're with, all the time. That's a reason to dread work. So it's a reason. I mean, to even I, think about I would I would give it a couple of weeks of just killing her with kindness. And if that if you can't get anywhere, and if you continue to have just an abusive situation, I would just go leave. Just go get another job. Uh, it's not worth it. Yeah. And um, I mean, you you talk to leadership, and their answer was a lame old horrible answer from leadership. Well, she's always kind of been that way, <laughs> which means we're scared of her too. <laughs> oh my God. You know, so we don't have anybody like that that I answer that about. You know, you, we, you get to work somewhere else if you're going to be a bud around here. It's true. We, we don't do that. But, um, I mean, you can have a bad day, you can have a bad week, but you don't get to just have the reputation of being hard to work with. The grouch. That's silly. This is The Ramsey Show. Look, I love real estate and I want you to have a house, but I don't want a house to have you. That's why you need to get in touch with Churchill Mortgage to make sure you do this right. These guys are awesome. They'll help you get on a smarter mortgage plan because they're committed to doing what's right for you. That means they check in every year with free consultations to help you stay on the right plan. They show you how to save money and interest so you can build wealth faster. They walk you through the total cost of your loan so you can make the best choice. Basically, they care. That's why we call them Ramsey Trusted. You can achieve debt-free home ownership and Churchill is here to help. Go to their site, churchillmortgage.com slash Ramsey to start your approval or get more information. Welcome back.
to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ramsey personality Rachel Cruz, along with my co-host, the man himself, Dave Ramsey. All right, we're going to go to Dave in Grand Rapids. Hey, Dave, welcome to the show. Hi. Hi. How are you? Doing great. How can we help? Okay, so I guess I'll start out uh, maybe different. I have every one of your books, Dave. I've read them all. I had your tapes. Educated both my children, who are 30 and 33, on your logic of how to, you know, stay stay healthy, stay safe, don't fall into the pitfalls. And I've also led that in my wife and our lifestyle. Good. So I followed all the steps, right? I have a mortgage that we paid off on our home last year. Wow. Nice. I'm, I'm 65. My wife is 62. She took her first Social Security check last week. Uh, I had her retire after 40 years of work. Uh, she just didn't want to do it anymore. So I said, that's it. You're done. Uh, so we did that. I have about 600000 in uh, 401Ks. 65, as I said. Don't plan on retiring. Uh, love work. Sales engineer for a company. Just love work. And for health reasons, continue, you know, working, your mind. Uh, life insurance. I mean, health insurance. Right? I don't fall into that category, so I get health insurance by working. But the question I have today that I don't find in your book, went to a class on how to save taxes and money. Just a class that was taught at a local school. And the thing he said is, in your 401k, you should start doing a Roth conversion now. So you're taking the money in my 401k, which are not Roth, and transferring that over before you get to 72 and and that would be a good thing to do. And I'm going to turn it over to you. <laughs> well, um, the tax bracket I'd be in would be 22%. Yeah, probably. And, get, and I have room to do that. By the, the, benefit, the benefit of it all being in Roth is if you're going to leave it alone, it's going to continue to grow tax-free. And you can leave it in there, growing tax-free, where if you don't, you've got to begin the required minimum distributions, the RMDs, at 72 and a half, like, he, like the person told you. Right. That, that is correct information. Right. So you're going to have to right. begin drawing down on it if it's in a traditional at 72 and a half. Whether you want to or not, you're going to pay the taxes on a little portion every year. Right. Okay, because the IRS wants their money. So uh, if instead you have moved it to a Roth by then, um, all at once or a little bit at a time over five years or whatever. Uh, you've already paid all your taxes at that point, and it will grow tax-free from then on. If you're going to turn right around and pull it back out within a few months or a few years, then that doesn't do any good. If you're probably not really touching the money, um, it'll probably make sense to do that because you probably got another 20 years before the money's ever accessed really then, like to 85, Okay. Right. Or 95 or whatever you live to. Right, but, right. Yeah, right. My dad's 90. Yeah. So, uh, but, uh, again, so, the faster you're going to use that money up, money. the worse yeah, the yeah. idea is to move it to a Roth. And I think what I'm hearing you say is you guys are in really good shape and you probably don't need to access this money ever. No, I have no credit card debt. Uh, you know, I paid the cars off. Uh, you're still working. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so working. Yeah. Uh, so, but basically, if we take six hundred and we pay taxes on it, it looks a lot like four hundred. Right. And uh, would, you know, and, know, and so, but it's, it's, it's going to look like that anyway when you pull it out out of a traditional later on. Right. So, you're you're going to get the hit sometime in the next decade. One way or the other. Yeah. I gotcha. So I you gotcha. might as well put it in there and let it grow tax free because I think you're going to be leaving it alone. It's good. Because when you start to transfer it, that's you have to have, you have to have the ability to have the the cash though to pay those taxes. Well, if you got that, then that's even better. But in his case, he would just use some of, of the that money, money to pay the taxes. Yeah, he would reduce the balance from yeah. six hundred down to the you know he's going to give up two hundred thousand now, or give it up later. The downside is is you don't have the two hundred thousand that was going to taxes growing from now on through it yes exactly for, uh, until you had to pull it out but you got the required minimum distributions beginning at 72 and a half used to be 70 and a half now anyway so i, I probably i don't think that's a bad suggestion 
It's it's a weird suggestion because you don't hear that from the financial community very often. Why? But, but um, I don't because they've been anti Roth. Don't do a Roth if you're over fifty five because it doesn't have time to grow. Oh, okay. And so uh, by and large, and but I'm sixty one. I'm not touching mine. I moved everything into Roth years ago, and I, I put everything into Roth now, mm-hmm. which is the same thing really. Like our four hundred one k here at the office, I dump all mine into a Roth four hundred one k, and I pay the taxes and move the match over into Roth at the end of every year. Uh, so, and do Roth personally. So, um, you know, all that. So because I'm never going to touch that money, Yeah. that money will be going to the, to the kids. I mean, it's not going to, uh, cause I, I won't need it. I've got other sources of income. It's good. All right. Up next is Sam from Tampa. Hey, Sam, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you guys very much for taking my uh, call. Um, so I have a question in regards to uh, whole life insurance uh, insurance. And, uh, I've been listening to the show for several years now. I'm a big fan. And, uh, Dave, I know your opinion on a uh, whole life versus term. Uh, however, um, I recently got married, uh, nine months ago and, uh, my wife, uh, she's 27 years old. Uh, her grandparents purchased a whole life insurance policy for her when she was born. So they've been paying off it for 27 years now. And essentially, um, her grandparents are transferring it to me. And so I can either surrender it now and get a basically about $5,000, or I can continue to pay in about $18 a month um, and, you know, get the, I think it's uh, $40,000 worth of life insurance coverage. And it's a uh, savings type uh, account where it uh, accumulates and we can surrender at any time. So, um, I, I know I would never buy a whole life uh, insurance policy based on your guidance. I would only get the term. However, in this case, I'm you know getting it. It's being transferred to me, so I'm trying to find out uh, you know what your advice is on this. Yeah, it's a great question, Sam. So I I would actually my husband and I we had kind of a similar situation from other family uh, members kind of thing, and kind of exactly basically the same thing had a policy um for us as well and we immediately just cashed it out and opened a mutual fund and put that money in there because it's going to grow uh so much more the the growth is going to be insane especially since you guys are so young um in something like a mutual fund versus sitting in that whole life account and then you guys just go get term insurance um for you and your wife and so you're keeping your investments and your savings separate from your insurance but i would um i would circle back are her are her grandparents still living her grandparents are still living okay. and uh, i just haven't gotten a chance to talk to the financial advisor to yeah. get the details on it no, no don't, don't, you, don't, you don't need to have a discussion yeah, with the financial. But I, it's not a financial advisor it's a re, it's an insurance agent but i would financial wh- advisors don't sell this crap but I would wrap around to the grandparents, though, and just out of just, I think, honoring them and what they've done, because their heart in it was really good for her, right? Hey, we're going to set this up for you right. and all of that. And just wrap back around and say, hey, you know, the gratitude that you guys have that, you know, you got $5,000 and that's amazing and how thankful you are. But, hey, here's our plan going forward. Just so you're aware, we're going to get, you know, our life insurance over here and we're actually going to put this in an investment. We're really excited about it because we hope to use it for a down payment on a home down the road or whatever it is. But at least giving them that dignity, dignity and honor um, of letting them know what right. you're doing with it. Because I think that that's I mean, it's a yeah. gift, a huge gift, which is very kind. Yeah. If yeah, you want to go, depending on how touchy this is with the t- with the grandparents, you could sit down with a Smart Investor Pro and open a Roth IRA, and just put the money into the Roth, into good mutual funds, right. and then you can show Grandpa, hey Grandpa, this y'all get a great thing for her. Thank you so much. Or she could say this even better than you saying it. And uh, we met with our financial advisor, and we decided to put it in an, into an investment, and so we moved it over to there. But, boy, you gave us a great jump start on there. And here's what this mutual fund's done for the last 70 years. It's averaged, you know, 11.2% for the last 70 years. It's really exciting. And you can show that you didn't go to Vegas with the money or buy a lotto ticket, <laughs> yeah. which is your grand, our grandfather's fear that you're an idiot, right? And so you just kind of got to prove that you had a plan. And the more she says, Grandpa, thank you for this, and we talked about it, and we met with our financial advisor, you don't need financial advice from their financial advisor because they're not a real financial advisor. Real financial advisors don't sell cash value insurance. Only insurance people sell them. Financial advisors only believe in term. This is The Ramsey Show. 
chaos. That's what it can feel like when your business is growing so fast, you've outgrown your financial and accounting software. The faster you grow, the more likely you are to lose control of the numbers. And here's the reality. If you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. That's why we use NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system. Over 28,000 companies use NetSuite by Oracle, including Ramsey Solutions, because NetSuite gives us a single view of everything we need to make daily decisions. Whether you're making a few million to hundreds of millions, a year, NetSuite gives you the visibility and control of the things you need to grow, like your financials, inventory, HR, planning, budgeting, and more, all in one dashboard. Go to netsuite.com slash Ramsey right now to get their free white paper, Jumpstart Your CFO Career. the debt-free stage here at the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions is Ryan and Michaela. Hey, you guys. Welcome in. Hey, guys. Hey, how's it going? Good. Well, you're standing on the stage for a reason, right? That's yes. right. Your journey is you've become debt-free. Absolutely. We are excited. Incredible. Excited Incredible, you guys. Congratulations. So where are you guys from? We're from Knoxville, Tennessee. Nice. Go Vols. Go Vols. Absolutely. What part? Um, West side. Nice. Okay. My husband grew up in the Bearden area. So oh, love it. Did we, you go to Farragut? Uh, no, I actually grew up in Morristown. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. Nice. All right. <laughs> Knoxville's awesome. That's so know. great. All right. How much debt did you guys pay off? So we paid off $193,000 in 32 months. Woo! Oh my gosh. We did. Amazing. In 36 months. 32 months. 32 months. 32. And 32. how, um, Oh my gosh. Okay. So what kind of income were you guys making during that time? Uh, we started about 107 and ended about 170. At 170. So you got a big jump. That's awesome. Uh, and what do you guys do for a living? Um, so I'm a teacher. And I'm a pharmacist. And you're a pharmacist. And what kind of debt was the 193000 uh, 19 was a car and the rest was student loans. Whoa! Where'd you go to school? Uh, UT. <laughs> <laughs> I also went to UT. <laughs> yeah, we both did. So. Okay. But a pharmacist. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so that the pharmacy school bills were, were that, it. That was the bulk of it, for sure. So when did you guys graduate? So I graduated uh, May of 19. Okay. And I graduated in 2021. Okay. Whoa. Just right. the other day. So <laughs> Yeah, just on. the other day. <laughs> yeah, so a part of this was we actually cash flowed her master's degree. So oh, we're wow. super excited about that, too. Amazing, yeah. wow. you guys. How long have you guys been married? Uh, a little over two years now. Okay. So, <laughs> so 36 months ago, or 32 months ago, I'm yes. sorry. <laughs> what what started this journey for you guys? Because this is huge. People keep this kind of debt around, especially student loans, for, for sure. decades. So it was my last year of pharmacy school, and I had just gotten my job offer from where I was going to start after I graduated. And all I could see was dollar signs, right? New car, new house, new clothes, everything. And I'll never forget, she turned and looked at me and said, don't you have a bunch of student loans to pay off? <laughs> I'm like, nah, babe, I'll just pay them for 20 years and they'll be forgiven. It'll be perfect. <laughs> and um, luckily, later that week, I had the wisdom to start looking and I realized that I had no idea how to manage money. So it was my first job actually making real money. And so I uh, came across a familiar face. We actually used y'all's curriculum in pharmacy school. We had a personal finance class. Oh, wow. So kind of revisited those um, those principles. aspects, principles, and just took off with it, drank the Kool-Aid, like you might say. <laughs> so went right in, never looked back. Very cool, very yeah. cool. So, uh, Michaela, you, you're like, okay, you got some student loans, and he comes back with a plan. Yeah, so it was definitely, you know, you see that money, and it's like, yeah, we want a house right now. And just to put this into perspective, for the past 32 months, we've been living in a one-bedroom apartment, just us and we've had all this income but 
it's been going to debt. So we've definitely uh-huh. made those sacrifices. And we've, I mean, when we say one bedroom, it's like a small one bedroom. Mm-hmm. And so to like see all of our friends getting houses and starting to have families and all these things. And we're like, you know, we're really dedicated to this. We're going to get out of debt. And we chunked at it and we cash flowed my master's and we made some mistakes along the way, but it, we definitely, it was worth every, every minute. That's incredible because, again, like you said, a lot of people kind of jump in, and when you get the big paycheck, and you're like, "Dang, we can do mm-hmm. a lot of fun stuff," but that less than three years of sacrifice now yes. has completely freed you guys up. Sure. Okay, so we're, um, what did what would you say the key of getting out of debt is when people? are asking because they're hearing these numbers, which are just insane. I think we each have like kind of are different. So like there's always the free spirit and the someone who's more like tight. I would definitely say I'm more of the free spirit even though it was my idea. I think for me it was <laughs> definitely like communication and like having that visual. So I'm a teacher, so obviously like need that visual piece. And so we had like a thermometer and we like yeah. colored it in <laughs> different color. You know, we got to, I was like, you what pick What grade up. do you teach? So I was teaching third grade. Yeah. In the middle, so third grade. <laughs> yeah. So um, definitely have that visual piece and he picked the color and I got to color it in and it was just a really it was a huge team effort but the communication piece for sure yeah for me it was all about being content with what we have so Rachel I read your book love Mm -hmm. your life not theirs and that was super helpful for me because like she alluded to you know we were seeing all of our friends get houses you know all this stuff and it was about really being thankful for, for what we had during this time and knowing that later we can, you know, make those strides to get the house, the new car, those sorts of things. So yeah, it really helped me. So live like guys. no one else. And later you can live and give like no one else. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. 10 years from now, no one will remember the one bedroom apartment. <laughs> That's right. No. I think we'll always remember it. You y'all, will. Y'all will. No, 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 no one else will. No one else will. You're the only ones that'll remember it. I remember all those places we live, but yeah. uh, nobody else does. Yeah. And that even the kids piece, don't know those places. Yeah. Sure, yeah. And that contentment piece is big. And I feel like that's one thing with money. It's not just the dollars and the cents and the math, right? There is a there's such a heart emotional level, and you guys have done such a such an incredible job with that. Okay, so were there people that thought you were absolutely crazy because they're like you're a pharmacist dude, like <laughs> you guys are like killing it? Um, we definitely had some people that were probably not directly to our face, maybe behind our back. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. but, um, most of the, our friends and especially our family were super helpful during this whole process. You know, we yes. could not have done this without their support. So super th- thankful for them and, and their support. Absolutely. That's I think amazing. the craziest thing we got was, wait, you did what with your credit cards? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Huh? What? You don't care what? about your credit what? score? What? You don't need a credit what? score? <laughs> don't you want a house someday? And so definitely that was, I think that was the biggest mm-hmm. Uh, judgment we got for sure yeah of that yeah. and you felt though the pressure though of people going out and doing stuff yes sure. so whether it was vacations or car whatever it is but you guys saying no and did and do you feel like what you guys went through together as a couple which you're you're still newly married right just two years <laughs> yeah. but do you do you feel that sense of bonds now with him as his wife and you as, a, as her husband of like man we can do this we kind of just did the impossible of what people would say is impossible for sure yeah but there's we like through nothing we it. can't do and it's like obviously the pandemic adds a whole nother piece right and so but I mean we were already kind of locked in so that helped a little bit you know you're stuck in your house (laughs) what else are you gonna do um but um definitely I feel like the bond has grown stronger and it was it was definitely a testament to those first two years yes you know like but if we can get through that we can get through through anything anything. amen amen Well Amazing, done, you guys. guys. We're proud of you. Unbelievable. Thank you. Well done. Unbelievable. I mean, that is that is a huge, huge feat. Well, we have a copy of Baby Steps Millionaires for you guys because that is the next leg of your journey, which I'm so excited about because you guys are so young. And I'm like, oh, the future for you is just, it's incredible. Absolutely incredible. And we'll give you a copy of Total Money Makeover as well to pass on to tell all those people who could have been whispering behind your back That's right. <laughs> they can do it too yes, absolutely. they can do it too all right we have ryan and michaela from knoxville tennessee who paid off a hundred and ninety three thousand dollars and 32 months making 107 to 170 a year all right count it down let's hear a big debt-free scream right. three, three two, two one, one. we're, we're debt-free, debt-free! Yeah! is a mountain to climb, $193,000 I mean, in student loan. First order of business out of school, boom. It's amazing. 
it's those decisions to me that when there's callers like that, that it's, it is so, all the journeys are impressive, right? Anyone that decides to tackle this subject in their life and get out of debt is always impressive. But when you have younger people, I don't know, maybe it's like a kindred spirit, a Knoxville sharing of our life. I don't know what it is, but I'm like, when I see younger people and there's a level of maturity there to say, and you say it all the time, a definition of maturity is learning to delay pleasure and just to say, okay, I'm, we're getting these checks, we're making this income and we're choosing to stay in the one bedroom apartment, we're choosing to be uncomfortable, we're choosing to do this for such a short period of time. That sacrifice, right, is such a short period of time for such long-term gain. And we it's make a amazing. couple hundred thousand dollars a year in about the next 20 minutes and they got no payments in the world. Do whatever they want. <laughs> That's a pretty cool place to be. I mean, you get to like keep your money and stuff. Have it's, your uh, income and use it. Your yeah. most powerful wealth building tool is your income. And when you get to keep it, you'll become wealthy. Hello. And the stress of money and marriage is now lowered, no payments, and they are on the same team. Absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. This is The Ramsey Show. Building wealth seems like a hot topic right now. So whether, gosh, it's crypto or single stocks, zero down real estate, the metaverse. I mean, there's all this stuff happening and it feels like everyone has an opinion and then you add inflation on top and then everyone's freaking out. And man, it's just, it's hard right now with your money to navigate and know what to do. So that is why we decided to take our Building Wealth live event on the road this year. So Vegas, we're coming for you. Orlando, you're... You're next. Week after next for Vegas. I know. Either it's coming up. May 5th. So, just a few minutes. And then in the fall, we're doing Sacramento, Minneapolis, and San Antonio. So there's uh, there's going to be a lot of travel coming up with a really, really fun event. So we're going to, again, tackle these quick uh, get-rich-quick trends, and we're going to dive into investing in real estate and uh, retirement, all of it, and give you the truth and the best way to build wealth. So Vegas, May 5th, like you said, uh the week after next, we'll be in Orlando May 19th, and then for the fall, Sacramento, November 1st, Minneapolis, November 10th, and San Antonio, November 15th. And tickets are just $25, or you can get a four-pack for only $60, and bring your friends. It's going to be a fun night. Our events are so fun. We, we enjoy ourselves on stage as speakers. We have fun. The audience has fun. And you get to learn and hopefully change your family tree. So go to RamseySolutions.com slash events to get your tickets before they're gone. Again, RamseySolutions.com slash events to get your tickets. And hopefully we will see you there. Yeah, we'll have five of our Ramsey personalities there. Rachel Cruz, George Campbell, me, uh, Ken Coleman, and Dr. John Deloney will all be there. We'll all be signing books and we'll all be doing uh, roundtable discussion as well as speaking and teaching. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, it is a fun event. It's a little bit of a different one. We did one in January and you do a lot of the keynote at the beginning. So mm -hmm. Dave does a lot of the teaching. And then at the end, we, we sit around a table and, and have these discussions because again, whether it's inflation, student loans, uh, crypto, I mean, there's just so many Mental elements wellness, of money right great now. resignation, yep, all of it. So yeah. much is going on. So we just sit and have a conversation and it's, it's fun. So come check it out if you're in any of those cities. Again, uh, we have Vegas and Orlando this spring, RamseySolutions.com slash events. Blinds.com, uh, Blinds.com's 100% satisfaction guarantee means that if you mismeasure or pick the wrong color, they'll remake your blinds for free. You get free samples, free shipping, and with the new promo codes that run every month, you'll save even more. Use promo code RAMSEY to get the best deal. 
Today's question comes from Ethan in Delaware. My wife and I are in baby step three. We've agreed that we would have my mother-in-law come live with us for her in her older years, but rather than put her rather than put her in a home. However, with a nudge from us, she has just barely started contributing forty dollars a month to a four hundred one k. She's fifty five years old and earns about fifteen to twenty dollars an hour. We're happy to help contribute to a mutual fund to help her now. However, she does not seem to feel the same urgency we do. How do we get her to see the importance of retirement planning? It's like leading a horse to water and trying to force it to drink, isn't that? I mean, it it is difficult because in one sense, I don't know, I'd love your opinion on this, um, Dave, but, you know, I feel like generations ago, the idea of having, uh, I was actually reading this in Dr. John Zaloni's book um, today, actually, I was reading it, about the past generation, you know, the older generation would move back in with the younger, not because of, I don't think, the lack of financial support that they needed, but just of having a multi-generational home. And that's how society was, I mean, hundreds of years ago, right? And so today we've obviously evolved and, and it is so different. So there is a, an element of this beauty of having her come back with you guys um, and live in the home. I mean, I think there's an element of that that's so wonderful, but not because she can't financially support herself, right? So there's there's that weird balance of the is it enabling? Is it honoring? Right? Like that, that's such a hard line for me sometimes. Yeah. I don't, I don't know how you get someone to see the importance of retirement planning. The only thing you can do is just start talking to her about, uh, things that you guys are doing. And, um, and it really, probably your wife's going to have a lot more influence with her mom than you will, unless you have an unusual relationship with your mother-in-law. Um, in, in my case, um, you know, I, you know, we've been married, Sharon and I have been married almost 40 years, so her dad's as apt to listen to me now as he would be to listen to her. So, uh, but early in your marriage, that would be probably be different. Uh, and, and so you, you don't necessarily, you necessarily earn the right by hanging around long enough to, uh, to start telling her what to do. But, you know, I think the thing you could do is just say, hey, listen, I read this book and it changed everything for me. Uh, it'd be really cool. Why don't you read it? Or I'll get you the audio book and maybe, maybe get her the audio book and the total money makeover book and give it to her or something like that. Just something to get her spurred along and get her concerned about. And the other thing is she probably is living hand to mouth at 15 to $20 an hour because she's not on a budget. She's got a tight budget with a lower income. And so if you can get her on a budget and she can start to see that she, if she was careful, she could put some money aside, Mm -hmm. then maybe that hope would kick in because she may feel overwhelmed uh, and and not really know what to do next. And if you can give her, kind of give her a foothold on the first step on the path, then, um, you know, maybe she can start to see the light a little bit. Yeah, I feel like that's true with money in general. We we get the question a lot of, hey, how do I convince my brother-in-law or mm-hmm. my, you know what I mean, or my friend? And you get this a lot. And really, whether it's logic by showing literal dollars on a sheet of paper and showing a plan that can kind of get them moving or bringing in that third party. And I feel like we end up being that third party for a lot of people of, hey, listen to this podcast or, you know, here's a great book. Or the third option, too, is just your own uh, testimony, like your own experience of what you've done and yeah, how and, you have felt lighter. And giving a get out of debt book away is like, like giving a weight loss book away. It's kind of can be shaming. You got to be real careful on yeah, how you true. do it. <laughs> and so you're like, uh, Hey, you're stupid. You need to read this. That doesn't work. Okay. So in, instead you go, Hey, I read this and I'm giving it to everybody because it changed my life. You know, and it's like, because I was so stupid in this area, and you just own your stuff, kind of. Yeah, yeah. And then you just like, I'm, I'm just, you know. And so, if somebody gives me a nutrition book that way, <laughs> I, I, you know, it stands, it st- sits on the desk for a day longer than in going straight in the trash, right? Totally. But, well, the but if they just give it to yeah. me and go, you're kind of looking fat, Ramsey, oh, you know, then that's probably not going to work for me. And <laughs> not a great motivator for you. That's good. <laughs> That's good. All right, we're gonna go to the to the phones now. And Alex from Detroit is up next. Hey, Alex, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. How can we help? Uh, so I've got a side hustle, um, part time business, moonlighting for the past few years, and uh, just recently had an opportunity come about where someone may be interested in purchasing it. Um, I'm just trying to figure out how to value the business. What do you do? Uh, very difficult. Very difficult. Because you're a one-man yeah. show, right? 
Yes. How much have you make on the side hustle? Uh, revenue or net? Either one. Uh, 40 revenue. And net? 23 and a half. Okay. So you have a part-time job that pays you 23 and a half and you own your job. Yeah, we're doubling every year. Yeah, okay. No, no shame in it, but that's really what's going on. Because if you don't show up, nothing is made. Currently, yes. You're the CEO, the chief everything officer. What do you? What is it, Alex? That's what correct. kind of what kind of side hustle is it? Uh, manufacturing. Okay. What does that mean? Uh, we make cosmetics. Okay. Cool. So, what is it that uh, has value in the business? What what, are the, what is it that's attracting this buyer? Okay. Um, we've got uh, numerous, we've got uh, 20 or so clients uh, that, that purchase products from us. We're mostly wholesale. Mm-hmm. So um, having the access to those clients, but also the, uh, the formulary know-how. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, if I if I owned this? the business and I had to pay you to do what you do, what would I have to pay you? Um, that's a great question in this current market. Um, part time, yeah, part time, maybe fifteen. Okay, maybe. so then the difference in that is the actual net profit after I pay you, and that times five or times four is the is what the business is worth. So let's call it ten thousand dollars net and say that the business is worth somewhere around 50,000 bucks, unless you have a recipe in those cosmetics that is more valuable than the actual yes, cash flow so far. That's it. Well, fun hosting with you. You too. You're a great co-host, Dave. I'm trying. <laughs> this is The Ramsey Show. Hey, it's Rachel Cruz, co-host on The Ramsey Show. If you want to do your debt-free scream live on the show, visit RamseySolutions.com slash debt-free scream. We'd love for you to come to Nashville and tell Dave your story. That's RamseySolutions.com slash debt-free scream. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. This is the show where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, create amazing relationships, deal with your career, your mental wellness, everything involved. Rachel Cruz, best-selling author, and my daughter is my co-host today. Open phones at 888 825 Two two five. That's triple eight eight two five five two two five. The call is free, and some say the advice is worth exactly what you pay for it. So, Rachel, these people just got married, made Good Morning America. Oh yes, with a five hundred dollar wedding, and her wedding dress was forty seven dollars, and I thought. Game I will give you on. the applause. <laughs> Game well, and especially on. if you don't have the money, right? Like that's the point. They, said they were like their we... goal was they didn't want to go into debt. Good Morning America did a full uh, feature on them the other day, and uh, ABC News, our friends up there, um, uh, this couple, uh, Kyra and Joel Broken Bro Bro, I can't say Bro, yeah. Bro, Bro Broken Bro, I guess it is, yeah. Broken Bro, um, were able to pull everything off for just five hundred dollars. Uh, in Los Angeles, which is way less than the nearly $30,000 national average uh, for a wedding. And um, their goal was just to be as minimal as possible, Kyra said, uh, and to spend the least amount of money possible. The bride and groom said they were able to do that by putting a heavy focus on not going into debt while starting their marriage. Way to go, guys. You're our kind of people. That's our people right there. I like you. Yeah. So uh, she apparently bought the dress online for $47. And I thought it was going to be, when I was reading this and looked at the article, I thought it was going to be one of those um, 
uh, deals, I, I don't know, consignment. There's a thing where the, uh, the yeah. like the prom dresses and stuff and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That you can, that, that's a, but that's a rental thing, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, there's uh, there's all kinds of things. But hers was a legit, beautiful white dress yeah. that, yeah. She just, just found off, a deal on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Found the, a deal on it. And it's probably, honestly, was not called a wedding dress. Like, it was a long, I saw the picture, it was beautiful. Just a long, white, very elegant looking dress. But Almost it's amazing. like a cocktail dress. When right? they put, like, um... Well, cocktail is short. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. See, it was it was a full length okay. gown. It was a, a, full, a full. I will a I will educate gown. you on yes, that. You. But uh, no, but I watched the clip too, and and she a lot of their family helped with certain things. So like the her aunt did the flowers. Uh, her sister had a beautiful like, like runner for the aisle, mm-hmm. and they got married. I thought this was great. The venue was free because it was literally on the side of the road. In L.A. Yeah. So like one of those pull-offs that you pull off, well, and, the it's a, on the side of the and it's a huge. So it's overlooking view. the ocean. Yeah, it was beautiful, and it was a. And they, I guess they just like the Pacific put, Highway, and everyone just parked right there, and they got white chairs right down. So she probably rented the chairs. So it's probably part of the five hundred dollar budget. Uh, the and, fine from the Highway Patrol was two thousand, but <laughs> the wedding was five hundred. No. <laughs> I don't know, but they did it. I was like, this is brilliant. Like, it was great. And it was beautiful, too, because she said, she was like, listen, it's our wedding, and we didn't want to go into debt for it. And this is what we had. It's one and day. It's one day, and it's and it's to show and bear witness to the fact that we are giving vows to each other to be before, a, God. before God in a lifelong commitment and the people there. And so the guests paid for their own food and drink at the reception. And she said they didn't mind because they knew what they were doing. She was like, you they know, know what, what they were signing if up for. you did that, because, not because you were cheap, but because you were trying to stay out of debt or get out of debt or something. 100%. And you told me, uh, I, I would... I would definitely pick up my food and drink at the reception as a guest, and I will pick up somebody else's. Yep. You know, I just think it's so cool. And, uh, you know, I mean, there might have been some little, uh, I don't know, some little niece or something that didn't think it was cool, but I bet all the old people loved it. Oh, absolutely. And, again, it's because there it, there's a greater why for it all, right? They they didn't want to go into debt. So, anyways, it was awesome. So great. Gosh, so great. Versus there was a story I actually was on Good Morning America about two years ago to do a segment on weddings. And it was like they covered this one wedding and it was like photo booths and fondue fat, all of this stuff, which is not bad. And I want to say that you can have a great big wedding if you can pay for it. But they were taking out a personal loan for the expenses of their wedding. Right. So we did a whole segment on it. But I'm like that versus this. So polar opposite. And and there's just there's there's such a beauty in that contentment piece that yeah. I think is just awesome. So, well, very cool. Well, we we've had big weddings in the Ramsey family. You and your sister, your brother. We just love big parties, and we love big celebrations, and and so we've enjoyed that. But we could afford to write the, whatever check that was. It wasn't completely unreasonable. But, but you gave us a budget. But um, we did give you a budget. Um, it, was it was a nice was, budget, but yeah, it, was it was a budget. No, oh, I appreciate it. And um, so, but but just the same. I mean, this is, uh, I, I'm thinking of other people on our team here who have gotten married lots of them for under ten thousand dollars lots of under ten thousand dollar weddings um and and here's the thing it's one day i mean if you said i'm gonna go out to eat and spend thirty thousand dollars you would shoot i mean you would go no (laughs) no because it's one day i'm gonna go on a one day vacation you know, I'm going to this place, and we're going to stay one night and one day, and the cost is ten thousand dollars, or, or thirty thousand dollars. You would be going what? But that's essentially what a wedding. I mean, it's a one day yeah. thing or two day thing with a rehearsal dinner. But you know, oh my gosh, yeah. So uh, it, it's okay to do it. You just need to have the money. But uh, we've created this um, expectation almost of what it should be. Yeah, it's, it's just crazy. It's almost created by the by the businesses around mm-hmm. it too the diamond industry the uh the uh, i don't know who uh, the, the, but we've romanticized in america weddings uh in india and america the weddings are both just over the top mm-hmm. but most other cultures they're not and so i just love this i think it's so mature and uh they're really married before god she said mm-hmm. and uh and before their friends and they're they, they're gonna have a great life it's awesome um and i just Way to go. Hats off from the Ramseys. So you good. guys are pretty incredible. The Ramsey team here brought this to us and said we wanted to salute you guys. You Very- know what I told Daniel, my brother, when he got married? I was like, listen, take the wedding budget, cut it in half, <laughs> use the half for the wedding, and use the other half for, for marriage counseling all years <laughs> down the road because working on your marriage is a whole lot, has a lot more value 
than the day. It really does. Oh, so. uh, yeah. It's, uh, he didn't do it, but yeah. <laughs> no. And neither did you. But yeah. No, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, so. I had that advice after. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> yeah, it's easy, to, it's easy to tell other people after you're done, right? <laughs> I love it. All right. We're going to talk to you about your life and your money. So, uh, by the way, the average household income in America is around 60000 The average budget for a wedding is around 30000 so people often ask us about a wedding. Uh, that means the average is people spend half of a year's income. That's the average. Now, do you? this is a case where you'd want to be below average. Uh, but if you make $100,000 a year, if you spend more than 50, you you're out of control. And for wedding engagement rings, uh, well, your rule of one, thumb is like? One month. One, one month's. month's income, max. Jewelry store tell you three, but they're in the jewelry sales business. So keep that in mind. One month max. And there is no correlation between the size of the diamond and the uh, how long the marriage lasts. As a matter of fact, there may be an inverse correlation. <laughs> this is the Ramsey Show. If you're considering a career in technology, I recommend Bethel Tech, and I'm not alone. Here's what Brendan said. Before Bethel Tech, I was driving Uber. Within four months of graduating, I got a job paying $60,000. About two years after that, I got a remote job that pays me $130,000, all thanks to what I learned at Bethel Tech. You could be next. Get started today at BethelTech.net and get $1,000 to $2,500 off of your tuition. Again, it's BethelTech.net slash Ken Coleman. Ramsey personality is my co-host, best-selling author today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Hey, if you're a small business owner, I get it. you got a ton on your plate, lots of big decisions, a million details to take care of. Uh, so make sure you protect what you've built. Commercial insurance will protect your business from the financial fallout, from accidents, lawsuits, vandals, and natural disasters. And you don't have to spend a bunch of time finding a good commercial insurance, uh, finding good commercial insurance that you can actually afford because you can work with one of the Ramsey Trusted Independent Agents. These are the same folks that will help you shop your car insurance, your homeowner's insurance to get the best deal. They're endorsed local providers. They're independent agents who shop a bazillion companies to get you the best deal. So protect your business, protect your car, protect your homeowners. Get the best deal by shopping around, and they'll do it for you. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash commercial, and you can connect with one of our Ramsey Trusted agents. Hey guys, we're going to be doing a uh, show here in a week or two on college, paying for college, scholarships, going to college debt-free. If you're a parent or a teen and you have a question about that or even a comment or a story about that, uh, we'd like to put you on the air during that show. It's a theme hour and you need to get in touch with Kelly so we can arrange for you to be on the show with your question or your comment or your story. RamseySolutions.com slash ask ramseysolutions.com slash ask put college in the subject line and let kelly know what it is you'd like to talk about and we would love to have you thanks open phones at 888-825-5225 gray is with us in tampa florida hi gray welcome to the show hi thank you for having me hi rachel hi dave sure how can we help um so I finally, well, my wife and I finally got scared enough um, and mad enough at our debt to stop our plan and start your plan. And cool. I have heard you mention in the past, there's a couple of things that you recommend before baby step one. I believe it's term life insurance and identity theft. Um, 
maybe a will. And the biggest part of this is if we are behind on our bills. So there's a couple like a car payment and one credit card we're behind on. Is that do we get current before saving the thousand or do we save the thousand like crazy and then get current? Um, okay, the will, the term insurance, and um, the identity theft insurance are just simply not a baby step. So it's not that they, you have to do those before you start the baby steps, but they're all something you need to do as soon as you can. Okay, but it might be that you're deep into baby step two before you actually implement those. Uh, I wouldn't say you have to get those done before you start baby step one. As far as getting caught up on your bills, yeah, I would get caught up on your bills. Um, and that's your, that's your first thing. Let's get to even, let's get to even. And, uh, the good news is you've already started concentrating on this. And so when you do this month's budget, you'll probably get even, won't you? Yes. It'll probably be about three weeks to get even. Yeah. Okay. So. All right. So and what you- happened, Gray? I'm curious for you guys, you said we got mad enough and scared enough. Um, what was, what- well, I got the biggest paycheck, um, single week paycheck in the history of my life Mm. and it wasn't enough to pay all of our bills and i i was scared my wife was scared the day before we got the paycheck because she saw how much it was going to be and said that's not enough Mm. and uh then i heard a debt free free scream from some people last week that they did had a construction company they sold uh, like kitchen counters or something and in three years they paid off over a million And I was like, that's it. I see the light at the end of the tunnel. We can do this. And um, eventually we won't have to be scared. But right now we're scared. But there's a solution that's not ours that we can get there. Yeah. How old are you guys? I am 31 and my wife is 32. How long have you been married? Four years. Okay. How much are your car payments? Um. One vehicle is three hundred and forty dollars, and the other vehicle is three hundred and sixty. Okay, probably need to sell one of them. Okay, you got seven hundred dollars in car payments. What's your household income? Uh, take home about sixty three thousand a year. I know you need to sell one of them. Pro- okay. And you, you get to pick which one, but it's probably yours, not hers. So <laughs> it's definitely my pickup truck is going. Okay. So here's the thing. Um, you said like five times that you're scared and it's a good scared because it's the kind of scared that says, I got to get out of the middle of the road. A truck's coming. Right. That's a good scared. Yes. Um, you, but the, with that, um, I've been where you are and I remember how it feels to have your stomach in your throat and not be able to breathe. And I know how terrified my wife was, and we were your age. Okay? So, number one piece of information that you need to tell your wife tonight. Number one cause of divorce in North America today, of money, uh, of marital fights, marital discord, is money stress. Number one cause. And you're square in the middle of it. And that terror that she feels and that hit on your self-esteem that you feel because you can't seem to get it together up until today okay it is uh they feed on each other she's afraid her claws come out that makes you feel less when you feel less that makes her more afraid and it's a really vicious circle okay so you guys have to look at each other take her hands in your hands give her a big hug and go okay we're doing this together Um, we are not going to live like this anymore and we are not going to let this take our marriage. And as a matter of fact, it's going to make our marriage stronger, but you have to say it out loud. Okay. I I can do that. We can do that. Yeah. Because I I don't want that to sneak up on you because even if you had a, even if you thought you had a really good marriage and you may, you may, you may, but this is the ultimate stressor on a marriage. So just know that, you know, if the number one pe- way people die in your area is bear attack, there is a bear in your living room, okay? <laughs> and so you go, oh, it's a problem. It's the number one thing, right? So, um, yeah, really, don't let the bear in the living room. And, and so um, 
That's what you got to do. You got to put your arms around her and hold on tight for the ride. Now, we're going to put you into Ramsey Plus, which will plug you into Financial Peace University. I want you to go through the classes together. We're going to put you in Every Dollar, the premium app. It's part of it, too, where you can do the budget together. And, and there's going to be a lot of people in there that are facing the same kind of stuff you're facing. We'll put you into a group. It's all on us. We're going to pay for it because I've been where you've been. The only thing I request is that you do everything we tell you to do and you go win. And then the second thing is someday when you're rich, you give it to some young couple that's scared, okay? Absolutely. Thank you so much for your generosity. And if you get scared and you don't know what to do on some little detail thing as you're working this, you call us again. We're here for you, okay? Okay, thank you. All right. God bless you, brother. Mm. That's so uh, that's most people. Yeah. Yep. 78% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. When you drive down the street, eight out of 10 houses on your street have too much month left at the end of the money. Normal in the, this country today is broke, and that sucks. It's not okay. It's not okay. And that's the bad news. The good news is you can do something about it. You get to wake up every day and make a decision. And I love even the the selling the car. So mathematically, absolutely. But there's almost this like jilt in your system that you need. When you've been doing the same thing, even though it's wrong, over and over and over and over, you become comfortable. You become familiar with it. And it's almost like when you change course and you do something like this and you just do something that feels radical. And he's yeah. like, oh, it's going to be my truck. Selling the truck. Like, it's going to hurt. It's not going to be fun. But you're Cutting doing my stuff. my credit cards. I'm going to sell the yep. truck. I'm yep. not going out to eat. I'm going to do some radical stuff. I'm not living like this anymore. Ah! you got to have that thing happen down inside of you. When you do, you'll be ready, baby. And we're here to help. We can show you how. But uh, you, can, you can wander into debt. But you can't wander out. It's not an intellectual exercise. You got to get so pissed off you can't breathe. I'm getting out. And that's right where he is. He's scared and he's mad. And oh, that's a really good place to be. This is The Ramsey Show. is full of firsts. As the first and longest serving Christian health cost sharing ministry, CHM has shared medical expenses for its members since 1981. We believe you should have the freedom to focus on your health while being supported by a community of believers, giving you the opportunity to create many more firsts. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Candace is with us. Hey, Candace, how are you? I'm fine. Good to have you. Good to have you. Where do you live? Indianapolis, Indiana. Awesome. Nice. And all the way here to do a debt-free scream. Yep. How much did you pay off? $234,000. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Oh, how long did this take? 31 months. Look at you. <gasps> I love it. And your range of income during that time? 74000 to 275000 Whoa. Oh, what do you do for a living? I'm a nurse practitioner. So you went to travel nursing, huh? I did not. I you stayed not. Um, as a nurse practitioner full-time, and then I worked in the hospital as a nurse full-time as well. And then I had another part-time MP job. <laughs> so you were doing 80, 90 hours a week? 96. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my precise. gosh, Candace. Okay. You're, you're, you're a beast, what? girl. I love it. Wow. <laughs> I want to know, know your schedule. What did, what did a typical day, because you worked every day during week. the week. Yep, so I did. Not nine hours on Monday, Tuesday. After Monday and Tuesday, <laughs> I worked at my third job on Mondays. Tuesday, I did four hours in my second job. Wednesdays, I do nine hours. I take a two-hour nap. Then I go to the hospital for 12 hours. Oh my then I take a nap, and then I do six hours <laughs> on Thursdays, Fridays, 
nine or 10 hours, nap 12 hours, <laughs> 12 to 16 hours on Saturday. How long did you do this? Um, 96 hours. I did that for the last probably nine months and then 80 hours before that. Before that. Oh mm-hmm. my gosh, girl. What are you down to now that you're free? Um, I'm still working a lot, but I'm throwing in vacations with it. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of got the rhythm now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What kind of debt was the two hundred thirty-four thousand dollars? This must be all the uh, all the school debt, huh? It was a hundred and fourteen thousand in school loans, thirty thousand in one car, and sixteen thousand in another car, um, ten thousand in taxes, thirty thousand in credit cards, Girl. and. 65000 on a mortgage. You paid off your house? Yep. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, no, wait a minute. You're, you're single. Why do you have two cars? Because I drove a com- convertible. Oh, now I understand. And in Indianapolis, it snows and it's icy. She so had two I needed cars. To, she, yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's so funny. And so you, kept them, you kept them and paid I them do, off. But I have both. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Look at okay, you. Okay, so what happened? What happened months ago that just made you yeah, say? Yeah, 31 months 31 ago. 31 months ago. That you, said, went, you went crazy. Here. I mean, man. Yeah, this is awesome. I guess about four or five years ago, I bought um, Dave Ramsey's um, The Debt Free Makeover. And I put it to the side because I was in school and I couldn't focus. And then when I graduated with my master's degree, about a month after I spent all my credit card money, <laughs> used all my credit cards, and you realizing that all my money was going to credit card debt, car loans. I picked up the book and I read it in two days and it was just life transforming for me mm-hmm. from there. Wow. Um, so I started budgeting. Um, I was Davish initially. And then the end of 2020, um, I kind of put the gas on. I went gazelle intense, kind of was um, disappointed in myself because I did a lot of traveling, trying to pay everything off. And I realized where I could have been. Um, so... 2021 January until September when I paid my school loans off I pretty much did 80 hours and then the last three months of paying my school loans off I did 96 and then I kind of kept going and then finished my mortgage off in March wow look at you (laughs) yeah (laughs) you are amazing you're a machine this is so good was it worth all that Uh, absolutely absolutely how you feel I feel free so mm. that's probably the best term that I can use. I feel free. Mm. Yeah. Bit overwhelmed before, weren't you? Absolutely. Overwhelmed, discouraged. So scared. Scared. Yeah. So tell me this, Candace, because there's probably people listening that could be in a very similar situation of what you were 32 months ago, right? Mm-hmm. And they're thinking, but th- there's no way I can do this. There's no way. I mean, this is going to be my life. What would you say to people that think that way, that it's just impossible? They've lost all hope. What would you say? Um, I would say just keep pushing, um, set a goal, stick to it, um, realize that the plan can change a million times like mm-hmm. mine did, but the goal never changed. So yeah. My goal was to become debt free and I'm debt free. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just eye on the prize. Mm-hmm. Yes. I love yeah. it. Wow. So, um, where did you learn to work like that? My mother. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So she, she was she, a worker. Your she, mom's a wild animal, huh? Yeah. She's a worker. Single mom of four. She worked oh, yeah. mm-hmm. two Working jobs, all always doing overtime. So mm-hmm. I've always had good work work ethic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if I want so. to do if I want something, I go work for it. Basically. That's, that's it. That's yeah. it. No other way. Don't sell that convertible. You just I won't work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna just go work extra hours. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Oh, okay. So what were people saying during this journey? Because I mean, people, cause, people had to be looking. I mean, we're like, we're we do this for a living, and we're still just like, wait, what? This you work 96 amazing. hours a yeah. week? Uh, so, yeah. What was everyone saying? A lot of people were inspired. A lot of yeah. people that I work with, because of course I spend a lot of time with them mm. and my friends. Of course, um, I didn't really share my journey with everybody until I got down to my last three months of paying my school loans off and my friends were talking about it to people so they were inspired and like you should share it so I started posting and then I did the rings um, paying the last 50,000 of my school loans so a lot of people were in tune with that so it was really really inspiring um, for me and for them so it was really really nice they were definitely inspired Hmm. a lot of people were discouraged because they're like oh I don't make that much well you don't have $234,000 in debt either (laughs) and you don't work 96 hours a week either exactly Exactly. So, there you go. so, uh, so uh, wow. what do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? Just being consistent, um, always knowing that you have to sacrifice, um, learning the 
um, aspect of delayed gratification. Mm. You know, everything we want, we usually want it now. And knowing that it's, sometimes it just takes time, you know, mm. even with, you know, wanting a new car, you know, yep. save up the money, <laughs> yep. wait, and then, you know, you can get your car or whatever it is that you want. Just the delayed gratification and getting away from instant gratification was probably the biggest key for me. Mm. How old are you? 31. Your mama's got to be looking at you with tears running down her face and She's proud. She's <laughs> Really, really proud. Yes. Yeah. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Well done. It's pretty incredible. You're an incredible young woman. Mm -hmm. uh, you. And folks, you don't have to work like this your whole life. She just did it for a short period of time yep. to hit a goal. And uh, But she knows she can. And you really can't work like that for five years in a row. You can't. Uh, your body can't stand it. Your emotions can't stand it. But for a short period of time, you can turn it on. Yeah. And really, for just under a year, you've been going like a maniac. Yeah. Mm. And uh, and now you're free, free, completely free. I figured you went uh, the way the numbers jumped. I figured you went travel nursing. That's why no. I jumped on that. But instead, you just took I a zillion hours. Picked up another full time job. <laughs> yeah. And there's two full time jobs and then a part time, part -time. job. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's all around nursing. Yeah. And uh, always a need, isn't there, for Absolutely. nurses? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Always a shortage. Yeah. Great career path. I'm so proud of you. Yeah. Wow. You're Congratulations. amazing. Congratulations. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely. We got a copy of Baby Steps Millionaires for you. That is the next chapter in your story for sure, mm -hmm. without a doubt. How ordinary people built extraordinary wealth and how you can too. The daughter of a single mom raising four kids. Learned how to work by watching her mama. Yep. Absolutely. Her mama, as you say, Rachel Moore, is caught than taught. Yep. She saw and, it. Uh, yeah. And, and here she And knew she comes. could and, and had the and confidence. She comes I mean, goes, there's a confidence I'm, that you have that you're absolutely. like, I can do this. I can do this. She's and a, even afterwards, and she's more She's a victor. Yes. She's not a victim. Yes. Yeah, That's right. Not a victim. Mm -hmm. She's a victor. It's amazing. Pretty incredible. Pretty incredible. Beautiful stuff. You just changed a, your life. Yes. Copy a total money makeover for you to give away to somebody, and uh, maybe you can get them started and stir up a ruckus like you did. I have. You are, you are <laughs> something else. You are something else. You are amazing. All right, Candace from Indianapolis, $234,000 paid off in 31 months. She did it in two and a half years, 96 hours a week for the last nine months. House and everything, and she's 31 years old, two cars, single, 100% debt-free. Wow. Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream. One, two, three. I'm debt free! Yeah! <laughs> Love it! Woo! This is the Ramsey Show. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Thank you for joining us, America. We're so glad you're here. It is a free call. We're talking about building wealth, doing work that you love, having amazing relationships, and completely changing your family tree. Brooke is with us in Phoenix, Arizona. Hi, Brooke. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. Hi, Dave. Hi, Rachel. Thank you so much for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Okay. So help me out here. So we want to either sell our current home, which has gone um, up to $470,000 in value. We only owe $78,000 on it um, and use that equity to put in a new property um, that is worth seven twenty-five. dollars or if we should stay in our current house and pay it off. Now, it's 1,300 square feet. We're a growing family. We're doing IVF again in June. Um, 
we want to know whether we should upgrade. Now, the property that's 725 um, is unique because it's a family member's property. It's three and a half acres. It has a manufactured home on it. So it's not huge and it's not a real house. And it also has a barn that he converted into a detached apartment. It's really nice. Anyway, we want to buy this property. Um, and he said he would carry us for five years at 0% interest. Um, and we're wanting to hopefully build a new home in five to seven years on it. So it's going to be a huge investment. Our financial advisor um, keeps telling us, no, don't do it. Your money is making money in the bank. Um, wait until your house is paid off and then use our current residence as a rental for the future and for our retirement plan. We're currently debt-free. Other than the $78,000 mortgage, we paid off $200,000 um, in five years on my PA school loans, and we paid off both of our cars last year. Um, we are self-employed, so it was difficult to get a loan. We did hear back that we could get a loan at 7%. So um, that was really high. If we put down our, if we sell our house, we estimate about a $365,000 profit. Plus, we've already saved up um, $225,000 earmarked for our future house. So this uncle would only be carrying us for five years at around $2,200 a month. So we'd be debt free again in five years. But what's your, we'd what's your buy household a house. income? So that it's between ninety four to one twenty five, and I'm a PA. However, Dave, I do want to say that I haven't really worked the past three years because the reason we have we got a settlement from major hospital because um, they made a medical error that killed my little boy. Oh my! Lord. And um, yeah, and the, the the ink is still wet because we just signed it. Um, oh my! And I didn't want to bring it up because I don't want to cry. Um, but okay. that w- immediately, right when we got that money, so we were left with, um, after 40%, we had to give the attorneys, we were left with around um, like eight hundred, nine hundred thousand dollars $900,000. But we immediately paid off um, our cars. And I had already paid off $200,000 on my school loans. And we only owed 27000 I immediately paid that. Um, I left my mortgage on until I could talk to you <laughs> because we only okay, have so, interest of three uh, Of the settlement time. money, you have 200 left? No, I'm sorry. No, no. The rest is, um, we have around, so we have 669 in cash and the rest is in mutual funds. So Okay, so you have um, 669 have, um, in cash and you have another 200 in mutual funds. Yeah, 291 in mutual funds mm-hmm. plus um, we... We started our retirement not in and our. You 20s, said your family. Have, you said your family's growing, and how big is your family now? Well, um, I had twins, and so that's a hard question for me to answer because my little boy died. So I, mm-hmm. I do have two, one angel in heaven and one here, and we're doing IVF again in next month. Okay, mm-hmm. all right. So you have one child on the, on Earth and one yeah. in heaven, and um, hopefully another on the way. Yes. Okay, and you're in thirteen hundred square feet. Yeah. Okay. And All we've right. lived there for 13 years. We haven't, even though I was making... Well, living in a bus, barn doesn't sound fun to me. No, 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 no. That would be a rental. Um, I know, a but rental. You, if you it's, sell it's your not, house, if you sell your house, you're going to be living in a trailer or living in a barn. Until, oh, yeah, until the manufactured build. house for a few years. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So your, uncle doesn't, need, your uncle doesn't need to carry you. You have the money to pay for the property. We do, but my financial advisor says. I don't care what your financial advisor said. You called me. Yeah, no, that's why I'm calling you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm paying cash for the property, and then I'm going to build a house, start building a house immediately. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you're going to live on that property. But that would go into our retirement. No. Because I thought you said you had have... 669 in the bank and 200 in, in mutual funds. You didn't. That we wasn't do, retirement. The, that wasn't retirement. Well, the mutual funds I thought is um, part of retirement. I'm sorry. Okay, is that a, some of that 200 in retirement accounts? Like 401k or Roth yeah, IRA, Brooke, only, or is it just uh, it just in regular, standard mutual funds? Do you know? No, 291. No, the 291 includes the Roth. There's 24,000 in okay. our Roth. How much in, do you have yeah, that is not in retirement in addition to the 669 cash? 
okay, subtract this for me because I can't look at my calculator right now. So 291 minus 24 minus 30,000, which is in my daughter's UTMA. And we have 85,000 in our savings account for emergency. Okay. A little heavy on your emergency fund. Okay. I, um, my financial advisor told me to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, three to six months is enough of expenses, and your ex- three to six okay. months of expenses is not $85,000. So if you sell the property okay. that you're in and you move in the trailer or the barn temporarily while you build, and you have, um, it sounds to me like you can buy the property for $700,000. Isn't that what you said? Yeah. You have 700000 in non-retirement money now. And you'll get the yeah. other money out of the sale of your house. Well, no, six sixty nine in cash. I and know. then we'd have to sell it. I know. And then you gave me all these other numbers. Was that in the six sixty nine or in addition to the six sixty nine? No, the six sixty nine is just cash. Okay. And then you've got eighty five. And then you've got other money. Right. And then you've got other money that's not right. the five twenty nine and not the four oh one K. Yeah. When you add those numbers together, you're well north of seven hundred thousand, and you have the equity in your house. It's around four hundred k. So you're saying we'll have enough? I'm for, saying to pay cash for the harder. property, and then build you a, a house on the property for three or four hundred thousand dollars. You may end up with a small mortgage in that process. Okay. Only on the build. Even though, though. The, the interest rates would be high. I don't want to be owing my out. uncle anything. Right. Well, don't, we'd pay them off in... Uh, I don't care. Okay. Don't borrow money from relatives. Okay. The borrower's slave we're to the lender. We're not borrowing. We're just... Uh, yeah, you are. Pay. Yeah, you are. Oh. Okay, you don't pay yeah, You don't pay him. He's going to foreclose. Yeah. That's borrowed money, kiddo. Yeah. You're, you're stepping no, you're up right. into a noose. You're stepping up into a problem, and you're getting ready to change your relationship with your uncle. <laughs> I'm not sure this house is the best house. I'm not sure this property is the best property. I think you're only looking at it because he brought it to you and set it on your doorstep and the zero interest point. sounded good. I think you might just go get you a nice house, I was move, ask move for... up in house and sell your house and yeah. pay cash for it. Yeah. I think that's actually what I'd do. I don't think I'd screw with this deal. I think I'd let him keep it. Just to look around and dream because it broke me. If you guys had that 400 I'm like, that's north of, I mean, like, you got a, you got a lot of money that you're able to save. You got a go million dr- dollars you can throw at something. Just go dream. Just look around and say, what could we do for a million dollars? I bet you could go find a really nice house for 700000 and pay cash in for it and end up with uh, three or 400000 laying around after you move in and move, you know, double the house, the quality of the house you're in, get you yep. a nice bigger property that'll, you know, don't have to build. You, you've been through all this problem. You've been through the loss of a child. You've been through, uh, the infertility treatments, you've been through all this stuff, you've been through the court, you've been through all this other stuff. I, I, I don't think I want the stress of building a house if I'm you. I built a couple of them. It's not that big a deal. You can do it. But I, if I were you, I'd just go get me a house. And I'd let the uncle keep his property. Actually, I'm really going to push you to do that. And I really think your financial advisor has way too much uh, to say about your money. You're supposed to tell him what to do, not him tell you what to do. It's your money. This is The Ramsey Show. Dave here. You can find all of our shows with the Ramsey Network app on your smartphone. It's the only place to listen to the entire back catalog of episodes. Download the Ramsey Network app in your favorite app store today. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, best-selling author, my daughter, is my co-host today as we answer your questions about your life and your money. It's a free call, 888-825-5225. We help people build wealth, do work that they love and create absolutely amazing relationships. Change your family tree. It's what it's all about. It's life right here on the radio. Mike is with us. Mike is in Lexington. Hey, Mike, how are you? 
Hi, Dave and Rachel. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Um, I've got a 529 that I started for my daughter years ago. And now my daughter is older and has pretty much disowned me. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. What should I do? What should I do with that 529 since I don't see any uh, future reconnection with my with my daughter? I'm sorry. That's awful. Um, how yeah, old? How yeah. old is she? She's 16. It's it's due to parent manipulation. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Mike. Um. Well, you you. How much is in there? Uh, sixteen grand. Okay. Uh, I can give you the legal technical answer. Um, the legal technical answer is the money is hers. It's in her name, and you put yourself in the seat of the manager of her money, and you have a legal responsibility to manage her money for her. And it the the setup doesn't account for relationship one way or the other. Okay. Okay. And so it's her money. Uh, you don't have a choice in that technically. Um, now, uh, on a practical level, if you cash it out, um, you're probably going to have some taxes on it a little bit. Um, and it doesn't sound to me like anybody's going to bother you. But you hypothetically okay. could get sued later. If uh, that you stole her money or something, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, right. So uh, I'm not suggesting you do that. I'm just telling you that it's 16,000 bucks. It's not it's not one point six million. So um, but uh, vindictive kids from manipulative parents uh, in a split up situation, you never know. So I don't know what you do with it. It's up to you. Um, what I, I assume you've got this with a, a financial advisor, right? No, not yet. Okay, who's the who's the five twenty nine with? It's it's through our our state. It's not through a financial advisor. Okay, you might contact them and ask them if you can transfer the custodianship to her mom. In other words, take your name off of the responsibility line and transfer the line of responsibility to her mom, and then her mom is in charge of the money uh, for her until she's 21, like you're in charge of the money for her until she's 21 right now. And that would get you out of the loop. Um, That's probably the cleanest thing you can do. Do you have other kids, Mike? No, it's just the single daughter. Okay. But you don't have children with another marriage or anything else? No, sir. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean I'm just trying, I'm trying, I, 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 I can't get past the, the, the knot I have in my throat from just the whole idea of this. But, um, but, but aside from that, the practical thing is if you get it out of your, otherwise you are, are bound to, to, you know, to manage this for her, for her education, and um, I guess she has to come to you for that then. If you want to leave it there as bait, um, you can. Right. Well, even if even if I were to remove that money um, through my disability with the military, she's still, you know, I'd still cover her for a portion of, of the tuition for any. You any still can. She wants. You still can. But you're not required to. Okay. The military benefit doesn't require it, and she can't access it without going through you, the military benefit, or the 529. So how, how long have y'all been split up, you and the ex? Oh, me and the ex have been split for 11 years now. Okay, and how, how long has your daughter made the decision that she doesn't want to contact with you? About a year. Okay. Um can I change hats? Sure. I'm just going to be dad. Um, I, I wouldn't do anything. I would just let her mother know, and uh, I would write her some letters. They may or may not get through to her, just telling her how much you love her and that you're here, and that when she gets ready to call to college, there's a college fund, and that there's a military benefit, 
and all she's got to do is get in contact with you, and you'll be happy to help her with that. And I would just let that lay there. Yeah, because she's 16, Mike, and I'm like, man. she She's going to come she, around. I, 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 I have hope that there, you know what I mean? It's... um that there's still years and obviously she's still going to be living, I'm assuming with your ex. Um, so you may not feel like it's going to get better, but I wonder as she gets older, um, even 18, 19, 20 years old, do you know what I mean? What, what matures in her and her curiosity towards you, all of it, you know, she still feels it's still young, even though it's, it's extremely Did hurtful. You, what was but, your relationship with her before all this? Uh, we had a fairly decent relationship. She'll come back around. Just over the years. Did something, so, uh, did something know, happen, Mike? Did, like, was there an event that had happened or just over time? She was like, I just don't want anything to do with you. Uh, I believe it was over time. Okay. There wasn't a set blow up where you did something. No, sir. Okay. I'm, I'm going to let this and the military benefit lay there because she's going to come back around and uh, you're going to be able to bless her. And it's going to be part of the reconciliation story. Okay. That's Papa Dave talking. That's not a legal financial answer, but it's also right. correct. By the way, it's also legal and it's also financial. But um, um, and you know she's got to come through you to get to that. And if she wants to go to school completely debt free, uh, you've got a military benefit, and she has a college fund that you funded for her, and you love her. And and uh, anytime you want to talk, I'm here to talk. And anything you want to you know yell at me about, you can yell at me about. And um, you get ready to go to school. I'm gonna I'm in a position to help you. Just get in touch with me at the, at that time. And you know, more than that, I want a relationship with yeah, you. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Above and beyond just absolutely. the five twenty nine. Yeah, that, that's the whole point. But yeah, yeah. I, I think you just sit with these things and but uh, and hold them in your hands. And they're an opportunity to bless her as the reconciliation goes along. And um uh and it, it's it. You know, there's just a natural gravitational pull between a daughter and her dad, unless there's something really toxic and really wrong. And um, okay, I, I'm, I've watched it with friends over the years, uh, where there's a temporary shutdown that felt like it was permanent, and they come back around, and they really do have a way of figuring out the truth. Um, sometimes it just takes a little while. I'm sorry. This is the Ramsey Show. If you're looking for ways to update your home without blowing the budget, I've got it. For years, I've been telling you about our friends at Blinds.com. Blinds.com makes it simple to shop top quality blinds, shades, and interior shutters from home with easy online ordering and free shipping. With Blinds.com, there's no need to renovate your entire home. Just change out what's on your windows with upscale choices like faux wood blinds, cellular, and roller shades or even outdoor shades. Plus, Blinds.com guarantees the perfect fit, whether you do it yourself or you have them measure and install everything for you. Shop their latest looks and see how much you can save at Blinds.com today. The easy and affordable way to make your home more beautiful is Blinds.com. personality is my co-host today open phones at 888-825-5225 it's a free call uh, we've taught gods and grandma's ways of handling money for nearly 30 years here at ramsey now our good friend and ramsey 
personality uh, expert, Dr. John Deloney, is paving the way for how we talk about relationships, how we talk about mental health. His brand new book, Own Your Past, Change Your Future, came out yesterday. It's now available for purchase, and it's a book everyone needs to read. This book is not just for people healing from traumatic experiences. John has practical steps that apply to everyone in every walk of life. Reading this book is like having John sitting one-on-one with you, offering decades of experience, practical advice, and encouragement on topics like relationships and how to live a more restful and peaceful life. Get your own copy right now of Own Your Past, Change Your Future for only 20 bucks at RamseySolutions.com. John will be on the road this coming Thursday, would be tomorrow night. He'll be signing books in Phoenix at the Barnes & Noble on Desert Ridge Marketplace on Tatum Boulevard, 6 o'clock Thursday the 21st. Make sure you make plans to do that. One week from tonight, if you're in Dallas on Wednesday night, April 27th at 6 p.m., he will be at Barnes & Noble at the Prestonwood Town Center on Beltline Road signing books. And so we invite you folks in Dallas to come out and see Dr. John as well. He'll be talking, answering questions, signing books at both of these locations. And you do not want to miss it. You don't want to miss this book. It is a, it is, it's a life changing, incredible, incredible book. Cheyenne is with us in Arizona. Hi, Cheyenne. Welcome to the Ramsey show. Hi, Rachel and Dave. Thank you for having me. Sure. What's up? I have a question. I'm 55, a widow. I'm out of debt, and I have about $400,000 just sitting in the bank. I am one of those um, investment-resistant people. Uh, I feel like it's out of my control. Um, I have uh, did a deep dive into trying to, to invest and talked to two different people who are financial people and got very deep in what they were recommending to me. But as I was researching it, there'd be something there that I just didn't want to invest in, a McDonald's or a Pepsi or some kind of chemical farming or things like that. And I so... <laughs> You know, I've downsized my lifestyle. I, I, uh, I've been a medical person for 30 years, so I'm semi-retired. I could go back tomorrow and do that. Income's not a problem. I just would like to know what your opinion is. Someone like me, it's, it's like you think, oh, my goodness, it's not growing. I have a friend that just lost $80,000 in the last month, a whole year of her income, based on the market where she had the money. And that just feels so out of control for me to put it somewhere where I have no control. Uh, your friend was investing in some kind of high risk something to lose eighty thousand dollars in one month, or or she has two okay. million dollars invested. One of the two, which is it? Okay, well, I don't know the person. The, the, yeah. it's, it's something to do with their work. Okay, see that was a high risk single stock investment, mm-hmm. and so that's not. See the market represents the stock market represents everything from ultra high risk, scary, crazy stuff down to things that are just plain boring. And so um, when someone says they lost money in the market, it can mean that they were virtually gambling in Las Vegas, or it can mean that they, you know, that they just panic every time that the needle moves a little bit. Um, so, but you, you mm-hmm. don't, you don't have a stomach for it is what you're saying. And you can't, I don't have the stomach for it. And you've attempted to uh, gain enough knowledge to get some peace and it hasn't worked. So, um, but you can't leave uh, four hundred thousand dollars sitting at one percent either. You, that's why you called. Agreed. Uh, yes. Yeah, I mean, because you're making nothing. So, what about buying some real estate that creates some income? Well, I did that. Two, I did two houses and turned them in, in during COVID. But of course, it was COVID, and so everything was twice as much, and the help was. So, I mean, I didn't lose, but I didn't. It certainly wouldn't show. A, it wouldn't have been worth it, in other words. So well, that's if, because if you continue to I've jump in and out of things, you're always going to lose money. You yeah, gotta, so you, you got to ride the wave out. And not necessarily redoing a property, but just buying one, renting it out, and having that passive income. I mean, if you had a forty thousand dollar property, that, I mean, a four hundred thousand dollar property that you a simple piece of you know nice house that someone rented for three or four thousand dollars a month, uh, you'd be making a whole lot more than you would on the bank. That's true. Uh, it's something I don't enjoy. I've had a, many years of it, and, and and not the best kind, not the best years of it. So Cheyenne, I'm, I have a question. Real estate is, 
you yeah. you you presented two problems with investing. One, it was companies that you just didn't agree with morally. You mentioned like Pepsi or mm-hmm. McDonald, right? I'm guessing you just don't agree with them as companies and the fear that you're going to lose money. Which is greater? Do you feel like which which part of it makes it like ugh? Oh, that's, you know, I guess in one sense, I'm, I I'd, I want to put my money where my heart is, you know, and, and have it manifest something good on the, on the earth. Okay. What would that be? You know, I don't know. I'm, I've been trying to search and find it. Yeah. Maybe there's some good funds where, where, where people are Christ centered, you know, and you, you don't find out at the top that they're moving against Mankind, I'd like to see. I'd like to invest in something that means maybe food. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Okay. Well, there's um, the, the, number one when you're dealing with a mutual fund, you're dealing with um, ninety to two hundred different companies inside of a mutual fund, and um, at any given time, one of those companies could have some kind of a business practice, disclosed or undisclosed, that somebody doesn't agree with. Okay. Now you're not giving mm-hmm. them money when you buy their stock. Okay. If you buy stock in a company from me, you gave me the money. Now you are benefiting when they make a profit and the stock goes up in value. Uh, you are benefiting from their actions that you don't agree with. And so that part I do understand. But if there's 90 to 200 and one half of one of the companies is doing something wrong, that's kind of like you shopping at a grocery store that also sells stuff you don't agree with, but you bought the stuff you do agree with there. You, you, really, can't find, okay. you really can't find something that's 100% pure in this world, this side of heaven. Um, if, now, I will tell you one thing to investigate. There is a, a group out of Atlanta called the Timothy Fund. The Timothy Fund. And it is a mutual okay. fund. And um, their goal is to invest in companies that to, to avoid investing in companies that engage in something, anything they consider to be non-Christian. And so, for instance, they don't invest in any tobacco companies or uh, alcohol companies. Um, they might invest in a chemical company you don't agree with, based on what you're saying. I don't know, but um, but the, yeah. the the Timothy Fund is actually done. It's a it's a moral based fund, a Christian based idea, um, and they've done very well. They've got a good long term track record. Uh, you might investigate them and learn about them. I don't have. I'm not associated with them in any way. Um, I don't have any okay. money in there, and I'm not because I'm against them. Uh, it's just not the pro- process I have used to do analysis for my my fund picks but um i've been aware of them for over a decade and they've got uh, the main central fund has probably got a now it's probably got a 20-year track record and it's it's beating the market yeah. and uh the, so and i would say too shine if you if you decide to step into something because you're wanting to make more than just one percent you don't have to just do all five hundred thousand like do 50,000 for a year and see how that feels. And maybe you take another 100,000, right? Like you can kind of move your way into this. Um, but for your benefit long term, uh, for you to even be generous on the other end to be able to give some money away to things that you really do care about, um, making and, that money and is I, part of that. I appreciate your pure heart, but that bank that's paying you 1%, I'll guarantee you they're engaged in things you don't like. I can just 100% guarantee that. So there's not a place you can hide in this world from that. No, I'll just promise you they're they're donating the things you don't agree with. I can promise you they are. This is The Ramsey Show. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, best-selling author, is my co-host today in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free 
Stage. Andrew and Stephanie are with us. Andrew McGuire is our Associate Director of Analytics. He's been with Ramsey for about four years. He's been a team member here for quite a while. A really bright young man, but a team member debt-free screen. <laughs> One of our favorite things to do. Hey, Andrew and Stephanie, how y'all doing? Doing well, Good, Dave. How are you? Very cool, very cool. All right, how much debt did you pay off? We paid off $238,000. Nice. How long did that take? It took three years, nine months, and 20 days. Three years. Wow. Nine months and 20 days. I'm not going to ask the income because all your coworkers are standing around. That'd be weird. <laughs> so, uh, wow. What kind of debt was the 238000 This was the house. Yeah. Oh, oh, baby step seven. I love it. You're so weird. Absolutely amazing. And a baby on the way. A baby on baby the way. On the way. When's so baby due? Sweet. In August. All right. Very cool. Number three? Number three. Yeah, number three. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I love it. All right. So three years, nine months, and 20 days. Uh, so that's, uh, you've been working on the house after you got here. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When we moved down here, we bought our uh, first house and set a plan to have it paid off within five years. And you did it in and three. Did it. We did it in mm -hmm. three. 3.9, yeah. I love it. <laughs> Very Amazing. cool. How old are you two? Uh, we're 31 years old. Okay, man. And what's the house worth? Uh, somewhere around 650000 Man, awesome. I've got a whole bunch of millionaires working for me. <laughs> I, I had a, another guy come up to me the other day, a young guy, and he said, I just passed the million dollar mark. There you go. I mean, uh, we got millionaires working here. You ought to come to work for Ramsey. We got millionaires here. I'm just saying, <laughs> you guys, way to go, man. Thank you. I'm not going to ask about the other and prove that you're a millionaire, but you're right there real close anyway with your 401k and other stuff. So good job, man. Wow. Very, very neat. Oh, man. All right. So tell us a story. You come to work for Ramsey and that finishes it up, what you're already working on? Or tell how's, how's right, all this yeah. weave together? Yeah. So our story really began uh, about six and a half years ago. Um, I was taking FPU at a local church, just trying to get my finances in order. Didn't have any debt at the time, um, but wasn't really budgeting uh, consistently. Um, and while I was in that class, I met Stephanie. Um, outside of the class and uh, and she had some uh, financial uh, work that she was doing on her own. Um, so we decided to take the class again a couple months later together uh, while we were dating. Ah. That's awesome. I That's thought you were about to say that y'all met in the FPU class. I was like, oh, man. <laughs> and then they work at Ramsey. And, wow. Yeah, no, no. Oh, a little bit, awesome. little bit over the top. Okay. So then you get married. You finish up that debt. And then you take this job and come here. That's right. Well, actually, we paid off the debt. I paid my last student loan the day before we got married. Oh, wow. Oh. So we got to go into marriage completely, completely debt-free. Debt oh, that's neat. Okay. That's amazing. All right. Amazing. Very cool. Okay. Very so cool. for you guys... I know having three kids, I mean, about to have three, you're living life, you're doing all of this. And the thought of even paying off a house, that feels impossible. I was just talking to a friend actually two days ago about this. And she was like, I just don't even think it's possible. So you did the impossible. So what, what is the hardest part? Having a young family, you guys are young, you're doing this. Like, what was the thing that you were like, oh man, this is just tough. This is tough. Like, are we crazy? Are we crazy by doing this? Yeah, I, I mean, I mentioned that uh, we set a plan when we got here that we were going to pay it off in five years, and making that decision and commitment um, was hard and an important big step to start with. But throughout the entire journey, um, just having the discipline to say no over and over again. Um, if you were to walk into our house today, you'd see a couch with holes all through it um, from dogs and kids jumping on it. And we've had the discipline uh, over the last four years to say no mm. and uh, you know cover it up when guests come over and that sort of thing. Um, in order to be able to have uh, this moment right here. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Absolutely amazing. And worth it. And worth it. Yeah. yeah. Worth it. Yeah. We had a couch that we covered up when I was a kid, but just because we couldn't get a better couch, it wasn't because we had a goal. <laughs> 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 you guys, that's awesome. That's just good. That's amazing. So how does it feel to not have a single payment in the world at 31 years old? Uh, unreal. I always, I keep telling you, Andrew, I don't, I don't feel like I should be here. I don't feel like I deserve yeah. this. Yeah. Mm. You do. I mean, you guys have done it. You yeah. have done it. You've done the work. You've been diligent. And people are just not, they're not willing to, to do the sacrifice, but you guys have been so focused. It's, it's, it's incredible. Absolutely incredible. When younger, when young people do it with little ones running around and they do that journey, I'm just like, golly, there's just, there's something about it that I'm like, the sacrifice is so real. It's so real. And yeah, you probably pinch yourself every day being yeah. like, wait, what? So how did it feel when you, when you sent in the last 
payment? <laughs> well, when we went to the bank, it was kind of anticlimactic. You can tell they weren't happy about us paying <laughs> off our mortgage. And so we were like, well, let's get out of here. We'll go celebrate with, I don't know, ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, George Campbell said the same thing. When him and Whitney paid theirs off, they were like, they walked in and they're like, <gasps> and they're like, and we're done. Okay, yeah. we're gonna just walk back out. Yeah, but yeah. the idea of it so is yeah. Yeah, even that was better. That's funny. That's and, so and, great. and so Stephanie, uh, h- how big a nerd is Mr. Analytical Andrew? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, on the nerd spectrum, it's probably like as far as you can go on. <laughs> so he's kind of got this so. dialed in, right? <laughs> yes, yes. That's why we hired him, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Because that's what he's supposed to do, right? <laughs> but I mean, he's got this dialed in. He's got the spreadsheet. He's tracking yeah. every yeah. every ounce. Stephanie's yeah. selling herself short, though. She's an accountant and a CPA <laughs> oh, as well. So. Yeah. It's a parable. All right. I like it. Good. Okay, what are y'all gonna do after? What are, what are you doing? What, what's like the next? What's like the big thing? What's the fun thing you're gonna do since you've been sacrificing for so long? Yeah, so uh, get a couch. Go to Disney. I don't know. What are you do? Get a couch. Uh, we've actually been planning uh, a trip to Mississippi of all places, uh, just to hang out for a long weekend over uh, over Memorial Day. So just get away for a couple days. Get away. Very it's awesome. Cool. I'm who, so happy. Who are your biggest cheerleaders? Oh, gosh. This team uh, here at Ramsey has been mm-hmm. incredible. Um, outside of these walls, uh, the people that, that you run into, they just don't understand the journey you're on and the sacrifices that you're making and um, and what you're willing to do for a goal. Um, but every day here at Ramsey, I feel supported. Yeah. Way to go. Very cool. Very cool. Well, uh, we're honored, honored to have you on the team. We're so proud of you uh, as friends, but as team members, certainly. And uh, wow, 31 years old, $650,000 paid for house. Boom! It's Just amazing. like that. <laughs> Woo! I love it. So very, very fun. You just got to love this. Absolutely amazing. All right, it's Andrew. Are the and, two oh, little oh, ones? oh, no, we got the little ones. I'm Are sorry. Bring the little ones up. The names yeah. and ages. Uh, so the younger one here is Emmeline. She's 18 months mm-hmm. old. Oh, sweet. And this is Adeline, and All she right. is three years old. Okay, and who's doing the handoff here? Uh, uh, that's uh, Grandma and Grandpa. All right, well, they're <laughs> proud of you. I love it. Very good. All right, Adeline and Emmeline, uh, Stephanie and Andrew. Andrew's a team member here for four years. 238000 That's their house. They did that in three years and nine months and 20 days, to be precise. And houses work 650. They're 31 years old. 100% debt free, baby. Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream. Ready? Ready? Three, two, one. We're debt free. Yay! Wow. Uh. Wow. I'm uh, since Baby Steps Millionaires came out, a lot of our team members are coming around saying, "Hey, we got the house paid off. Uh, we just added up the uh, 401k and the other stuff, and the net worth just went over a million dollars." And the number of times I'm hearing that in the last month around mm-hmm. the building here, pretty amazing. And um, you know, they make you know, the folks here make market rate. They make good money, but we're not paying people a million dollars a year here either. So right. they're doing this stuff because they're they're following the baby steps and they're truly baby steps millionaires in the process. And so, I suspect Andrew and Stephanie are there or very very close at this point. That's very very cool. And it's always encouraging to me where I'm like, you know, that took four years and a long four years. I'm sure it felt like. Yeah. But I'm like, that's such a blink. I'm like, you look forward and you're like, oh my gosh. You know, in the next four years, what you're going to have invested and what you guys are going to be able to do as a family. And then you just keep going, going, going. I'm like, for a short period of time, a short period of time, it's hard, but it's so worth it. They're amazing. Live amazing. like no one else. So later you can live and give like no one else. This is The Ramsey Show.
Our scripture of the day, Proverbs 15, 1, a gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Dale Carnegie said, don't be afraid of enemies who attack you. Be afraid of friends who flatter you. <laughs> oh, man. Really? Wow. Pretty fun. <laughs> really? Hold on. Can we talk about that for a second? Dale? I took his class when I was in high school. Flatter. Flatter. Flattery. Flatter I know. Flattery is not true. Oh. Okay. It's an in- <laughs> It's just a, a compliment. It's an, untrue, it's an untrue compliment. Really? Yeah. Flattery. Gregory is in Baltimore, Maryland. Hi, Gregory. How are you? Uh, how are you doing, Dave? I'm better than, than expected. And Rachel. Good. Um, uh, my question for you is, well, I've got three, really, but I know I don't have much time, so I'm going to talk fast. Um, I, I'm, I'm caregiver for my 97-year-old mother Whoa. who lives with me. Who lives with me. And she has an annuity with a well-known Christian organization in which she pays uh, yearly five thousand dollars contributes, and she gets about twelve a little over twelve hundred in dividends. I guess it is. And I'm wondering, is it, is it should should I get her out of that? I'm, I am her uh, power of attorney, and I'm wondering, should I get her out of that? Um, and she's always been a giver. So, um, and it's reflected in that. Um, but I, I'm, I'm just, excuse me. I'm sorry. That's okay. Oh, so sorry. the, um, so, uh, who is the beneficiary on the annuity? I have no idea. Okay. Well, you need to find that out. And, um, oh. uh, because I, it should be who she wants it to be. And that way the money will, from the annuity will pass to that person upon her passing away. Um, yeah, you need to make sure that is in order with her being 97. So, um, uh, how's her health? Uh, she has memory issues. Okay. All right. Um, but you know, she still walks and she still right. can with help get in the tub and wash herself and she still eats herself. And wow. All that well, God's I, been good. I, I would, um, yeah, I'd make sure the beneficiary is correct on it. Cause that's who's going to receive the money from the annuity upon her death. And we want to make sure that that is set up correct. And as the power of attorney, you can do that. You can ch- take care of that. And if it's not set properly, if it's set to someone that she wouldn't want it to go to now, and she just forgot to change it, then you can jump in there and get it changed and set it up for something else. I'm probably not going to cash it out at her age uh, because she's probably going to have some penalties or something else. I would try to figure out a way to stop adding to it. Yeah, that's, you know, that's what, that's my dilemma. Yeah. Trying to find out what you know. If, if you have to stop, if you have to cash it out to stop adding to it, and there's not any penalties, and you just set the money in a bank account, that's fine. Because right. We're, right. we're probably not investing long term when we're 97. Agreed. Right. That's true. That's you know? true. And just, um, just statistically, so yeah. Number one, make sure the beneficiary is right. Then number two, you need to find out. You know what the implications are of closing it down and make sure there's not a big bunch of penalties or something um and you know so if she dies what happens and if she lives and you take it out what happens these are the two things you need to get dug into exactly what the details are you have the right to do all of that as her power of attorney and you should immediately and then that'll help you make the decision as to what to do if you need some uh, investment advice you can sit down with one of our smart investor pros they might be able to help you uh comb through this if you go to ramseysolutions.com and click on smart investor they might be able to help you analyze the information and decide what to do because i can't tell from what you're describing exactly who or what she's gotten into here um, but I do know that uh, an annuity always has a beneficiary on it, like a life insurance policy does. And so the money will pass directly to that person. And that might be the easiest way to cash it in is for her to, when she passes away. And so, um, you know, that, that's w- what I would look at. Jared is in Florida. Hi, Jared. Welcome to the Ramsey show. Hey guys. Can you hear me? Okay. Sure. What's up? So, I had a 2017 Jeep. It was pretty nice. It had bells and whistles and stuff. But my move to make myself debt free was to trade it in for an 07 Mustang. It's uh, it's it's just a car, you know. It's not as crazy high tech as my old one was. Um, 
and I don't know, I'm just trying to justify to myself that I did the right thing. Uh, it was a $300 a month payment. So, you know, I'm, I'm debt free now. What do you make? Uh, about 50 a year take home. Mm-hmm. What's Mustang worth? Uh, I haven't looked that up. I'd assume around, actually, I did a while ago. It's about three and a half or 4,000. Okay. All right. And, uh, well, I mean, if you save up money and move up a little bit in car, that's fine. Uh, how old are you? I'm 26 years old. I'm an OR nurse. Okay, cool. Well, that's good news that you've got a great career and you, you can add hours whenever you want to and, uh, do a lot of different things here to be able to, um, you know, hit some financial goals. Now you're debt free. That's a good thing. Yes, you did the right thing, but, uh, there's nothing wrong with owning a car that you like. And so it's, you know, saving up and moving up in that, as long as it's no more than half your annual income and vested in things that are going down in value, then that's fine. But what you've got some margin there to move up at this point. I mean, if you added $10,000 cash to this and moved up to a $15,000 car, it'd probably be a completely different vehicle, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'd be willing to drive this car for basically un until the wheels fall off. I'm, I'm not a huge car guy, um, but I, I, would be able to move up in a while if I was able to, you know, save and do it the right way. Yeah. But another thing for me is I just started investing into my company's Roth 401k. Good. Um, I did the low cap, mid cap, high cap, and uh, international. Mm -hmm. And I, I picked one from each, one mutual fund of each. And it seems like it's been going down for the last month or so. I shouldn't worry. I should keep my head on it, right? Correct. Correct. The market's been going down. Yeah. So you're just riding the market. Mine went down too, by the way. <laughs> All right, good. No, um. Yeah. So <laughs> we're just, you know, we're not, we're not, I, I don't, I don't track stuff on a monthly basis. I look at it about once a year and I generally right. check to see if my funds are doing a little better or about what the market is doing. And if they are, then I just leave them alone. Uh, but it, you know, we're just, we're here to ride the long, long term and over the long term is where you make money in a good mutual fund. Good deal. Hey, hey man, thanks for the call. Mm -hmm. We appreciate you joining us. I know it can be a little distressing, especially in the times we've been in of just like, sometimes the market was nuts well, and then you, it's like, eh, and then it's this and then inflate. I mean, it's just, it's all over the place. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, I do the same as you. I'm like, I don't even look at it. Once a year, take a glance, make sure everything's good and looking good. But you'd stress yourself out, or I would, looking at every little, every little thing. I'm like, ugh. It is, it's normal, though, human nature. When you very first start investing, you want to check on it. You want to see what's doing. Mm -hmm. You want to see what's doing. You want to see what's mm -hmm. doing. And you first start investing, and then it goes down. That's like, what? <laughs> yeah. Is that how this works? You know, that's all he's saying. And that's, totally. a, that's a normal thing. And, um, you know, I appreciate you asking about it because mm -hmm. it's, it's a normal human emotion to look at that. But you didn't invest for one month. You invested for, uh, you know, 30, 30 years mm -hmm. when you bought one into your 401k. You're 26, so 40 years. You're 66 years old. That's when that money's going to So all you got to worry about is, is it going to be down when you're 66? And the likelihood of that is almost zero. Yeah, you know, zero percent chance you're gonna have it's gonna be down by the time you're 66. So you're gonna be okay, and uh, that that's the play. And nobody gets hurt on a roller coaster except those that jump off in the middle of the ride. So ride the ride, and uh, you're investing when it's up, and you're investing when it's down, and you're investing when it's up, and you're investing when it's down, and you just keep going, folks. And uh, you you let your intellect overpower your emotions, and then you keep with it. Rachel Cruz, good show today. Yes, thanks so much. Fun so stuff. fun. Thanks to James, to Ben, and to Kelly. Zach in the booth, taking care of business in there. That puts the Ramsey Show in the books. We will be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. It's Rachel Cruz, co-host on The Ramsey Show. If you want to do your debt-free scream live on the show, visit RamseySolutions.com slash debt-free scream. We'd love for you to come to Nashville and tell Dave your story. That's RamseySolutions.com slash debt-free scream.